Good morning, people of Memorial United Methodist Church. The greatest people in the world, no question about it, amen? Yeah, that's very good. Well, my name is Watanak Hien. It's my privilege and honor to be your pastor. If it is here for you the first time, make yourself at home. This is a good church. This is a good time for us together. And let me say this. Welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest Methodist church in the world. Hey, hey. That's good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Also, welcome our friends who are worshiping with us online. May the Spirit of God be with you wherever you are. If you would like to check us out, please come. This is a very friendly environment. We, we have great time worshiping together. But if you enjoy wherever you are, I pray that the Spirit continue to work with you, okay? That's good. All right, friends, today we are here to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let me keep reminding you, nothing should stop you from worship our Lord, all right? Maybe my English is not as good. Maybe my sermon is not as awesome. Maybe there's some, you know, problem throughout the service. But that should be just the minor thing, right? The most important part is we are here today to learn more about Jesus, to worship him from the top, from the bottom of our hearts, to build the relationship with him, to know him more and more, and to leave this place inspired, knowing that God is always with us. His love is amazing. He will continue to inspire us as we leave this place. The Spirit of God is always with us. Amen? Amen. Friends, I always love to say, I love you, Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And I want you to say that. Because it's like when we come together, we need to clear our mind, right? We need to let the world, let each other know that we love each other because God has loved us. There's nothing we can do about it. Can we say this together? One, two, three. I love you. Jesus loves you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Are you ready to worship? Right. That's good. Let us worship our God together. I would like to invite our acolytes, Jordan and Emily, coming down with the light of Christ. The light of Christ represents the Spirit of God is with us. As you are worshiping God, friends, maybe the Spirit is going to nudge you, going to whisper to your ear, going to talk to you. So pay attention. If God calls you to do something, move forward. Allow God to inspire you and lead you to live life to the full. Now I would like to invite our liturgist, our awesome Johan, to help us in time of worship. Johan. Good morning, church. I hope you guys are having a wonderful morning today. Like Pastor said, my name is Yohan Yang, and I am part of the youth group here. Now for the call of worship. I will say the leader part, and you guys will do the people part. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you angels. Sing praise, you heavenly host. Praise the Lord, snow and rain, blow loud winds and storms. Praise the Lord, women and men, rejoice children and rulers. Praise the Lord, mothers and aunts, give praise, grandfathers and cousins. Now for the opening praise, the gift of love. Let's, say, let's stand and sing our gift of love. 408 in the Methodist hymnal. Make it. 
please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine in the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if you're able to, please stand for the scripture. John 13, John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I'm with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where am I going? You cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as, just as I love, have loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you're my disciples, if you have loved for one another. The word of God for the people of God. You guys are able to be seated. Thank you. Today, I thought we'd play a little game of charades. How people, I'm gonna act out something and you tell me what you think that person's job is. What do you think about that? Okay, I think you guys can get it. Okay, I'm gonna borrow this here. What do you think I am? Good job, kiss your brain. Today, children, we are going to learn about the Amazon. And then we're going to write a report. What's my job? Let's go outside to recess. Make sure you're in line for... Good job, good job. Um, hmm, this is Officer Smith. There is a 10120 at Cedar and Shaw. All right. My mask on. It's very smoky in here. I can't see. What do you think I am? Very good. Very good. Take a bow. Take a bow. You guys are all so smart. Well, today I'm going to bring my paper. I am so sorry. And all right, I'm going to get down here. So today, these acting outs reminded me, me acting out jobs, of how Jesus told his disciples that he wasn't going to be with us anymore. And that we needed to go out and show people love like he is showing us. So how is a way we could show people we love them through, with wearing Jesus' face? Like if we had his face on, what would be a job or something we could do for somebody? Is that a confusing question? How could you help somebody through Jesus? Hello? Could we pray for them? Yeah. We could maybe go visit them? Okay. So that just reminded me, and like I said, Jesus said he was, being, he was going to leave and we couldn't go with him, but we were to be his disciples and spread his word. How about we say a little prayer, guys? I'm prepared today. God, we want others to know we're Jesus' friends. Help us to love others like Jesus loved. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys.
How are you all doing today? So far, so good. Enjoy the worship service. I, go, I hope that God has been speaking to you throughout all the things that we do. Francis, when we come and pray, when we come and be with the community, when we, we come and you know, share our love for one another, that is like, it, it enrich our soul. It makes us one. It makes us community of love. It, it's just amazing. I'm going to start with a, with a funny story here. And this is about a small, little, small church in a, in, in a little, small town. And they heard that the bishop is coming to visit them. So the, the bishop is going to stay in the parsonage. So the father told his son, little Johnny, that, hey, um, bishop is coming to stay at our place. We need to really take good care of him. So the son was like trying to prepare everything to make sure that he's doing proper job for the bishop. He said, well, look, on that morning... I want you to go to the room, bring him breakfast. Before you get in, you knock on the door. You said, it's the boy, my Lord. It is time to get up. So he was practicing and practicing, right? And on that day, in that morning, he was ready. He got into the room, outside the room, knock, knock, knock. And he said, it is the Lord, my boy, and it is your time. Your time is up. Wow. Hey, yo, yo, yo. All right, friends. Now I invite you all to be in a time of prayer with me. Close your eyes. Relax all your muscles. Sit comfortably. Find your feet on the floor. Rest your hand either on your laps or on the pew. Let us remember our loved ones. People that need our prayers. Let's remember our country, the leaders who need our prayer as well. Remember the world, where there is darkness, where there is injustice, where there is war, where there is famine. Let's pray for them. Let's spend this minute together in time of silent prayer. Maybe it is a good time for you to just listen 
and allow God to speak to you. Lord Jesus, we come to you with humble hearts. We surrender our lives to you, Lord. We are here to worship you. Lord, may all that we do be pleasing to you right now. Lord, we ask that you will speak to each and every one of us as we are ready to receive. Lord, we remember our friends and our loved ones, those who will be traveling tomorrow or throughout the week, those who might be sick under the weather, those who might need your comfort right now. Lord, we pray that your love continue to shine through, that your healing power will continue to be with each and every one of us. Lord, we pray for those who are not as fortunate as us. As us. We ask that your blessing will continue to be with everybody. Send us, Lord, as your messenger of love to go out and be the person you call us to be, to do the thing that you want us to do, and to become the people of your kingdom. And Lord, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, because you are our rock and you are our redeemer. Amen. Friends, this is another classic scripture. I know you all have heard about it. The scripture that it's just so simple from the book of John chapter 13 verse 34 it say just as I have loved you you should love each other. How many of you have heard that? Raise your hand. Right? You've heard this scripture before. Many times people uh, preacher preach about it. Preacher used to pound you on that. Love each other, love each other, right? Love should be the DNA of our Christian life. Jesus said this is my new commandment. Forget about everything else. This is the new commandment. Bear it. Live it. Love each other so that the other people will know that you are my disciples. And it should have been ingrained, engraved in our hearts. It should, it should be in our DNA, in our blood. If they would check it, they would see this love in this Christian world, in this Christian group. And why do we love? Because, because we love because he first loved us. How many of have you have heard it, right? You love, why do you love? You love because God loves us first. We remember the time that Christ picked us up, bring us into his kingdom, allow us to grow together in this wonderful time, wonderful community of faith, growing together, living under his guidance, under his teaching. He loves us so much, and therefore, we are the agent of love, and we go out and we love. Once again, love should be identity. You see the word I use? Should be. Because it is not. I'm sorry to say that, friends. We have a lot of works to do. Can you imagine right now? You go to somebody who is not Christian, who is out there, and ask them, what is Christian like? What is the identity of Christian? Who are Christian? How do you like Christian? What do you think about Christian? What do you think they will answer? Christian are hypocrites. You heard that, right? Christians are judgmental. Have you heard that? Christian is old fashioned, right? Christians is very exclusive. Right? Christians don't really practice what they preach. Man, why do people think of us like that? Shouldn't, shouldn't they already have, have already identified us for almost two, for more than 2,000 years that this Christian is the group that walk together, live together in love. Remember my first message that I come into this church? I want our church to become a place, a factory of love. That we all sitting here together, we are actually making love. 
right? The love aroma is, is, is going out through our roof so that anybody that is driving along Pulaski or Scott or even Shaw, they will smell love, right? Love that we are baking right now, it gives the aroma all the way to Selma. That even people from Selma come to worship with us. The people from Sanger, the people from everywhere, Fresno, you name it, west and east, south and north, in Clovis, that this is the factory of love. And we have a lot of work to do, friends, to make this happen. To make this happen. Look at this. The scripture in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 2 say, If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all, men, all mysteries and, and, and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. I am nothing if I don't have love. How many of you have heard that scripture? You heard it, right? Love is above all. You gotta love. But once again, why don't the world understand of who we are? Why don't the world see love in us? Are we practicing living love with one another? Wow. Maybe we have not done enough. Maybe we have not Practice the example that our master have given to us, our Lord have given to us. John 15 verse 13, great love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. See that? Maybe our love has not been into that point yet. The sacrificial love. Dr. Eugene Peterson explained the word sacrifice. You know what sacrifice is? Sacrifice is the unwilling, the, the, the revelation of the future. It is when you know what the future holds, then you sacrifice your present to achieve that future. When Christ knows that we all can be reborn, we all can, live, can, can have new life, new hope in Christ, can experience life-transforming experience in Christ, He gave it all the sacrificial love of Christ so that the world will experience the love that He wants to give us. How, sacrifi how sacrificial are we in terms of loving others? Or is it always my way or highway, right? We love so much, but I have to love it my way. If you don't love my way, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give in. Think about that, friends. Christ understand that even his life, he was sacrificed so that we can experience this new life in him. How much more should we sacrifice so others can experience new life in him? So that others can receive hope in him? Think about it. Think about what we are doing to our friends, to our family members, even to our church member. Because I'm afraid, friends, what we are doing, we are not showing that sacrificial love to many others. They don't see it. When they're talking to us about Christianity, all they hear is judgment. It's judgment. It's exclusivism. It's, it's, it's old fashioned, old school. They just don't have anything to relate to it. Throughout the history, there's so many things that has been happening, changing so many lives, changing so many different situations. Just, just say, for example, John Wesley. Right? Grew up, became a minister, changed the course of the world. Right? Who else? You name it, right? Presidents or important people, right? Elon Musk, right now making this Tesla car, you know, millions of people are ordering it. Changing the course of the world. Self driving car. How, how, have you ever thought about it? One day you don't have to drive that car. 
You just walk into it and it will drive you to the destination. I know some of you don't like that idea, but it's happening. It's very, very close. Very, very close. One day you can just drive to work, get off to work, and then your car can go make money for you. Right? That's what, that's what he dreamed, right? Your car will just go and make money for you. Right? I'm talking about how this thing has been revolution, revolutionized the world so much. And that we are, we are the Christian. Our DNA should be love. The love that revolutionized the world. That the world will see us. That wow, when I come to Memorial United Methodist Church, this is the factory of love, man. They are in there baking love, heating up. Look at the minister. He is sweating all over. He is heating up. He is baking that love, you know. And then they will keep attracting more people, allow others to experience the faith community that we have. Right? It's not just only for us, friends. It's for the world. But I want you to really think about God's love so that you can just follow his example, the example that has changed the world, that has changed the course of the world. Have you ever heard this song, Forever, by Chris Tomlin? Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he's above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. God's love endures forever, friends. And how is your love? Follow that example. The example of that sacrificial love that has transformed our life from the inside out. See, when it comes to God's love, it's so deep. It's not just only to these people around us. The Bible also says, but I say your enemy for those who persecute you, that you love and you pray for them. Right? But I say love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. This is the, the kind of love that can revolutionize the world, friend. That can give the revolution to the world. That should be even more important than self-driving car. That should be more important than anything. Think about it. Why do we sacrifice? Because we see the revelation of the future. The future is bright. That is why we are doing this all together. And I just want to say thank you to all of you. We've been here together, friends. We're working together together. Trying to make this factory of love continue to grow. Can you think about it, friends? We see new members. We see new friends. We are building new building. The youth building is moving forward. I'm sorry about this uh, a lack of workers. You know, we just have a hard time trying to find somebody to come and paint. You know, it has to be two weeks back order. Ask uh, Darren, you know, with the engineering department. I don't know. People are so busy, right? My garage was burned down three weeks ago. Nobody come and change nothing. Like, I mean, they're busy. It's back order. Sorry. What can you do? Right? You go get all these quotes for people to come and paint for you. You got the money for them. When money is no more important, they just don't have time. Right? You guys got to wait. So be patient. It's working. Right? We are even thinking about new project. Hiring youth director. Man, are you not excited being in the growing community of faith? Can I hear a hallelujah for that? Come on now. Yeah, that's good, right? Are you not excited? When was that? Now, you know, have you ever thought about when did that? Like, oh man, we got to cut, cut staff, right? Pastor will have to take pay cut in order to survive the budget of the church, right? Kudos to the pastor, but what does that mean? That means the church is not doing well financially. Right? It's not as healthy. But right now, we are in the situation of like, wow, that's the first three months in the last 25,000 years that our church can exceed the expense. Isn't it not exciting? Come on, let me hear something from you all. Eh? That is great. And why can we do this together? Because of your sacrificial love. 
Because of your sacrifice, you know the revelation of the future. You want the future of this church to be so bright. You see all these young people running around. You want to offer space to them. You see all these people who don't have hope, who don't have future, who don't have purpose, who, who, who just lost. And you want to welcome them into this community of faith so that they can see again, so that they can be born again, so that they can just experience this unconditional love. Man, I cannot imagine one day we will renovate our youth, our, our fellowship hall, make it brighter, nicer, welcoming to many other people. And then one day we'll say, wow, our church is so full, we need to start a second service, right? Oh, well, the church is so full, we need to rebuild our sanctuary, make it so that it can host 500 people. Won't that be so exciting? Come on now. It won't happen if you don't sacrifice. But it is happening right now. It is happening right now. Why? Because you sacrifice. You give your time. You give your talent. You give your treasure to make all this happen. Because you are devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. Come on, I thought this is only what the Rory Club do, serve beyond themselves. No, this is what we church should do, right? This is what we church should do. We love one another, and this is what we are doing. We love one another, we devote to each other, as even beyond ourselves. Once again, why do we sacrifice? Because that love is the DNA in us. It will revolutionize our church history that one day that one day you will come and say wow I can't imagine I can't believe how much good we can do to our community that our our life-changing business is growing is moving that our factory of love continue to function as fully fully equipped is producing love is sending out aroma that the community whenever they drive by memorial united methodist church the greatest united methodist church all they smell is the love that christ is baking inside this building really you guys gonna look at me like this right no no excitement at all right <laughs> come on now huh? hey come on let's do it yeah huh Above all, friends, above all, love each other deeply because love cover over a multitude of sins. I, you know, I, I think the scripture understands exactly, exactly that we are human beings. Yes, we can pump ourselves up saying that we are the greatest United Methodist Church in the world. That we are doing the great thing. That we are growing. And all these things are true, right? That all these things are true. It's, it, it, it's, it is an exciting time. You know, we have lots of members, lots of youth, baptism and all that. You know it. You like it. You see it. You want it, right? But at the same time, we understand we are human beings. Right? There's always children running around while the church is going on. Right? Somebody is sinning. Right? Somebody is causing problem. Right? Somebody is always doing something different. Right? But we have to follow this. Above all. Above all. Love each other deeply. So deep. So deep that it cover over all sins. Right? Because if you think about it, you know, sometimes you're like, ah, oh, man, I don't like this. I don't like that. You know, I don't like the denomination. I don't like the pastor. I don't like, you know, you, you can name it. Right? Because people sin and therefore you will see it. But then you will have to train yourself that, hey, our mission is above that. We're going to oversee it. We're going to love each other. We love each other so deep. So deep. That it will cover all the sin. Now I want you to spend this time in prayer. And why you to close your eyes. Think about people around you. Think about people at church. Maybe people are sitting around you right now. Maybe your family members. 
your co-workers. I ask you to pray for them individually right now. In your own language. Pray for them. Pray for them that, that God will work in you. To be the agent of love. To love everyone around you. Period. Unconditionally. Period. Ask God to empower you right now. Empower you to, to really live the life of love because love is your DNA. Lord Jesus, look at our hearts. We all are here, Lord. We want to offer everything to you. Take control in our lives, Lord. We want you to, we want you to just take charge, lead us. Give us that, that wisdom, that energy, that power, that inspiration to go out and live and love and just shine through and, and allow that DNA to, to, to live in us, Lord. That whatever we think, whatever we speak, whatever we do, will represent your love. Lord, help us to be the real agent of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, friend, let's give God a big round of applause. Hey, God is a God of love. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of forgiveness. God is a God of awesomeness. And therefore, friends, when we come together, we never forget to celebrate Holy Communion. It is because Jesus recommended that we do it all the time. Do it as often as we can in remembrance of him. Jesus brought his disciples to the upper room to have dinner together. Before the dinner started, Jesus took the bread, broke it, gave thanks to God, gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Friend, you can find a wafer in the communion element. Eat and remember the body of Christ broken for you. After dinner, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this cup. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. The second layer of the communion element is the juice that you can drink. When you drink, remember the blood of Christ shed for you. I pray that the love of Christ be with you wherever you are. And now, friends, at this time of celebrating the Holy Communion, I ask that you will spend this time to really think how Christ has has, has loved have how Christ loved you sacrificially. Think about how Christ wants you to become the agent of love. Think about how Christ wants you to go and change the world one person at a time. At a song going on, if you want to come down and pray, please come to the communion rail and, and pray right here. Or if you want to go to the candle station, go light the candle representing the light of Christ shining wherever there is dark. Let us be in the attitude of prayer with the song together.
pray that God has been working with you throughout your life. I pray that God continue to inspire you and touch you in, in a tangible manner, manner that, that you really feel it. It's not somebody out there telling you what to do, but it is God. It is the Spirit of God that work in you. Friends, it's now time for us to give to give back to the community that we love so much. To do together here so that we can allow God to really transform our community. Like I said, we sacrifice because we know what the future holds. We are excited to do this together and invite you to join, to be a part of this movement the movement of growing, the movement of doing something new, the movement of changing the history of our church, changing the history of our community. So please, give generously. And thank you for those of you, all of you, who have been supporting our church. People online as well, thank you for, for continuing to support us. You can give online by aiming your camera, your camera phone, your smartphone to the QR code it will lead you to a website that you can donate online that way. So please, I ask you once again to help us. Our youth building, we $500 shy. As of right now, $500. Everybody can t give $10, right? If we all give $10, we'll make $500. So let's do it, right? Let's make it done, right? I don't like it when Kathy comes to me and says, Pastor, we need $500. I was like, $500? Come on, we can do this, can we do that? Come on, hey, hey, let's do this together, right? Yeah, everybody give $10. We do this. Okay? All right, friend. Thank you so much for doing this together. I'm, you know, I feel so comfortable when I can just speak lightly like this to you. I don't have to be so, you know, I just be friend with you. I'm so happy to be in this church. Wow. I don't know. I don't know if you know that. I just want to tell you that. All right. Let's join with me in a time of dedication prayer. All right? Let's say this prayer together. Lord, accept these offerings given with joy as a token of our praise, that they may be used in service to Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand for a time of doxology.
join us together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together. Friends, while you see us standing, please see the benediction. The Spirit of God is with you when you leave this place. The Spirit of God continues to inspire you when you leave this place. The Spirit of God will always convict you when you leave this place. Open wide. Remember your mission. Remember your DNA. Your love DNA. Remember what we are doing here together. That one day, love will revolutionize our church, our community, each and every one of you. So friends, go. Go live the life that God wants you to do, to be, and to become. Go and be the agent of love and change one person at a time. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Thank you so much, friend, for coming. God bless you. God bless you wherever you are. I will see you next week. Amen.